guys, I'm Mike from True Life Captured. Uh, today we're going to be talking through my top five uh, things to consider when video recording a live music session uh, for a band. Um, I was actually lucky enough to uh, work together with the Old and Our guys on their latest uh, tracks and yeah, we had a, a really good time so I wanted to kind of share that with you. So, uh, number one is understand your gear. So I'll give you a bit of a run through of the gear I actually used. I came prepared with two Nikon full frames, the D750s. These things are really, really good. I use these for all kinds of shoots that I do, from weddings to portraits um, to absolutely everything, really. Um, so yeah, these things handle low light situations really, really well, and the auto ISO setting is, yeah, fantastic. Um, or I use two SD cards, 32 gigs, so make sure you've got plenty of room for storage. Um, I actually go in and manually set the picture controls, just so they work really nicely for every different position. So the image quality on these are really good, and um, the next to none, so this, that's why these are my go-to cameras. Um, Lens-wise, uh, for the majority of the actual filming for this, I use the 24 to 85 millimeter. Um, this is really nice for actually pan around with a Steadicam, um, and wide enough to actually uh, capture everything, really. So, um, and the image quality on that was, was really good through that lens. The second lens I actually used was the Nikon um, 1.5 50mm. This is a really, really sharp lens, really nice. Um, and what one of the things I actually used quite a, quite a bit for this was the manual focus ring. So for shots, which we can see here, um, where I actually change the focus from the, uh, the fingers on the fretboard down to the actual strumming um, was something that I actually planned for and I, I wanted to use. So I, I knew I wanted to use this lens all along. Other ones that I bought with me are the 35mm 1.8 and also the Rockin' On uh, 8mm fisheye. I didn't really use the fisheye, um, we tested it a little bit and we found the distortion wasn't really the kind of effect that we wanted to go for, um, but the 35mm was fantastic to actually set up on my Nikon D5200s. I set them up at various different stages and, and areas of the room on tripods just to capture it. Um, the other angles really, so that worked perfectly. Um, we used tripods just like this one. Uh, we had probably two or three scattered around the room, um, as well as GoPros, um, just to just to make sure that we really captured all of the, the right angles we wanted to. And one of the best pieces of equipment that I used was the newer Steadicam. So this was really good for the flowing motion, making sure that there was no um, sort of juddering in the images and it really sort of flowed between um, one shot to another. The one thing with this that you have to make sure you understand is how to calibrate it to your camera because any tweaks on the camera um, really offsets it and it can it can make this thing go crazy. So my second tip is understand your lighting. So before you go into any kind of uh, video recording session or photography session you need to understand how the lighting is going to affect your, your camera and how to capture it as well as you want to. So um, we were lucky enough at the venue to actually have eight LED spotlights that we could control manually um, through a or like a control board where we could change the, the color, the uh, power of them. So we went for uh, like a white and purple kind of ambient look. Uh, we thought that worked really well with the actual style we were going for. Um, some of the other pieces of equipment that we had, I've got, I did have two 80 watt halogen bulbs that we stuck behind the speakers. This really gave like a backlit look and worked really nicely. Unfortunately, as I as we were halfway through actually recording, one of them fell off and smashed, so I need to replace it. But I can't recommend these enough because the power that they were they were producing was really really nice. We also brought a newer uh, LED flat board um, that we stuck right at the front of the venue, so it really brought out. Um, the, the subjects closest to us so that worked well. One of the things that we had to consider as well is they had a smoke machine there and we couldn't let that go to waste so um, as you can see Tom, Tom kind of sprayed it everywhere and really clouded up and it really left some nice effects um, so we wanted to make sure the lighting works perfectly with that getting some different sort of lighting effects different colours coming through um, so that was really fun to play with um, so yeah that sums it up for the lighting so the third tip is work well with your clients. Um, fortunately, during this session, I had the guys at Old and Arway, they're super chilled, um, and it was really nice to work with them. So I, I think it's really important, in no matter what sort of uh, videography sessions or photography sessions uh, you're doing, whether it's weddings, portraits, bands, um, yeah, anything like that, you need to 
understand what they're after um, and also understand that you can then have a creative aspect that you can incorporate into their ideas so um, yeah just never be afraid to kind of talk to them about it say right I've got this idea I think this would work better um, and likewise they can share different ideas with yourself but never be afraid to actually uh, to mention that because they really do appreciate it whoever it is so my fourth top tip then is understand your venue um, so it's really important before going anywhere to actually go and check out the venue go and scout around see what you're working with um, I think at this venue one of the things that we that we really liked about it is the actual equipment that we could use there the lighting the smoke which we hadn't originally um, adapted into the project so um, definitely going and checking that out first and having a play around with it worked brilliantly for when we actually had the the recording session um, and yeah just get to know the owners of the place get to know what you can do there um, you, you, something that's quite important is to understand your um, your parameters to work in so if you can play music past 11 o'clock there um, that's one of the things that we had to to make sure we we didn't actually overrun that mark um, but yeah get get to understand the venue go there beforehand just check it out make sure everything's kosher and as it should be um, and see what you're working with so my my fifth top tip and the last one is preparation um, you need to prepare for all kinds of shoots whether it's from making sure all of your batteries are charged and all of your equipment is prepared and cleaned the night before um, just making sure you've got spare memory cards making sure as well that you actually get a feel for what the uh, clients are after and what the, the band are after and um, one of the things that i found with this was actually listening to the songs um, through quite a few times really helped when I was in the middle of my, my recording session so um, I knew that when one of the guitar um, guitar sections were being added in I knew exactly who to go to I knew when there were going to be certain drum fills so I could sweep towards the drummer um, just getting a, a feel for the vibe of the music and understanding which segments are coming when really really helps so another point around preparation is be prepared to do multiple um, segments of videos so having four songs that we were going into we didn't just want to go and record one take of each individual song because we knew things were going to crop up um, and yeah we wanted to make smooth transitions between each individual shot so we we actually recorded multiple um, multiple versions of the song basically where we could select the best parts of each individual section and then really merge them together one of the, the next stages when we had finished our recording session was to, to make sure we had the backup done straight away. So you always hear horror stories about people's SD cards that have corrupted, um, different things that have gone wrong, they've lost different, um, different bits of footage, and I can't think of anything worse really. So I wanted to make sure that all of our footage was backed up straight away. Um, so that was something we made sure we did. Um, after that then we moved into post-production. So we used Adobe Premiere Pro um, for this. It's fantastic just to get all of our raw footage in there and then we can start colour grading, moving segments together. Um, and Alden R actually recorded all of the um, sound individually from each in different instrument. So putting them over the top of the actual track worked amazingly. So yeah, overall it's been a really good session. Um, Myself and True Life Captured, we really enjoyed the opportunity to work with these guys. Um, we're going to see some big things from Olds and R coming up in the future, so definitely keep an eye out. For, for True Life Captured then, coming up in 2018, we've got loads of weddings, uh, loads of travel posts, and also loads of other music recording sessions. So um, check out all of the links below and hit me up if you ever need anything. Um, yeah, thank you for today, guys. Cheers. Give this a like. <laughs>